What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Tim Vip Live. It's Thursday night. It's 8 p.m. Do you know where your freedoms are? It's a good Twin Peaks reference. I don't know if anybody's going to get that or not. I'm Perry. If you're here for the very first time, welcome. This is the official new set for live streams, as we kind of did for the first time last week. But here we are again. Got it all fixed up. Instead of using the dumb old DSLR like a noob, instead I'm using my iPhone, buddy. Yeah, how about that? How cool is that? It's not really that cool. Nobody really cares that much. Uh, <laughs> want to first and foremost say thank you if you are watching this live, but also thank you if you are watching it on the replay. If you have not yet, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like little button over there. Also hit the bell notification because it does help your guy out quite a bit. Uh, with uh, you know, you find out some new things about what's going on with the channel as far as uh, as far as maybe some some new videos coming up. And I'll tell you guys right now, you're going to want to do that because the very first YouTube review that I've ever done is going to be live next week on the YouTube channel here. So if you have not yet, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Let's take a look at who we got here in the chat tonight. We got Donnie, our blue wrench for the evening. Ms. Lil Morgan. Patrick, also known as Bourbon Noob. Nope, go away there. Um, everything else is popping up except for what I would like to have pop up. There we go. Nick Foles. Michael J. Hello, Michael J. I don't know what you just said that you retracted, but uh, hope that it was in good, good fun, at least. I don't know, man. I don't know. Mike Meyer. Hello, Wesley Zeller. All the regular crew is here tonight. Thank you all so much for showing up and showing out. So, uh, as you might know from last week, we do not still have the normal, quote-unquote normal, method of Super Chats. That comes through YouTube. We have a different system. Unfortunately, I know it's a little bit of a hassle, but it is a great help to myself, to the channel. It keeps me going. It's kind of put food in my baby's belly. She's not even six months yet, so maybe I should have said it puts diapers on her bottom. So there's that. Um, <laughs> but the link is in the description below for this video. It's the very first link there, right under the little description, little blurb that I write every week for these, uh, these live streams. I don't know if people actually read the description of each episode or each live stream. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you do, actually. Lick the like and like the lick. Thank you, Sugar Kitty. <laughs> oh, also, you guys can see the chat on screen. It's all popping up for you right there. Also, in the top left-hand corner over here, this is really screwing with me because I'm saying top left-hand and I'm using my right hand. That is where your tips are going to show up here on screen. And uh, I'm trying to find a way to... Uh, yes, Snuffy Chats. Sorry. I... Uh, Sub count has not updated since last week. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that, Pat. I don't know what's going on with that. We're up to 685 right now, though. So, that's not bad. Aloha Don, all the way in Hawaii. I also like this standing up thing, because I have so much more room to like express myself. I'm a hand talker, and I'm also just kind of a, I'm a little fidgety guy as well. So, being able to kind of get up, move about, not feel so trapped... By a, by a chair and a desk is really nice. So I am enjoying the heck out of this uh, out of this set. Yeah, I hope you guys like it too. What's everybody drinking on tonight? I started the evening out with this Buffalo Trace pick that I got to be a part of back in December with our buddies over at the Texas Whiskey Consortium. Shout out to Travis Gents for letting me hog, um, um, tag along for that what I was trying to say. Uh, it's called, oh, you didn't tell me that he had a short barrel. Let's see if you can see that. It's great art on the back there for the sticker. Absolutely love it. Super fantastic. Um, Swan will have an inbound package starting tomorrow. Fantastic. Loving the new setup. Thank you, Lil. I appreciate that. So anyway, this is a Buffalo Trace pick uh, that I got to go on in early December, I think is when that was. I can't remember off the top of my head. But regardless, uh, thank you, Travis, for letting me be a part of that. And thank you as well for sending me bottles. I heard a buzz on my phone. 
uh, which again is all the way over there, so I don't have a good monitor for uh, <laughs> for snuffy chats. So we're just going to pull up the old email and see if we've got us a notification. Uh, nope, just letting me know that uh, there was a security alert for my podcast email. So that's good. I'm happy about that. <laughs> Johnny Drum in the Glen Karen tonight. Michael J. Michael J., what was it that you said earlier that you retracted about Buffalo Trace? I got, like, the first three words of it, and then it, you just, you uh, redacted it on your own. Um, Emerald Giant, Sugar Kitty. I don't know. Is Emerald Giant like an Irish whiskey? Because it sounds like an Irish whiskey. I haven't been able to find a BT bottle since COVID. Sug it COVID. <laughs> nice. Uh, and Patrick is currently drinking Guinness Nitro cold, cold Brew Coffee. If I could speak, that would help me out a lot, considering I do a podcast. That's not a, not a bad thing for me to be able to do. And Lil's drinking tea. Just a little bit of tea. Not bad. Yeah. Oh, look, it, it updated to 684, Pat. I don't know if that happened after we said something about it, but... Anyway, so tonight, we are celebrating that great American tradition <laughs> known not only as bourbon, but baseball. I think that the phrase, it's as American as apple pie and baseball, should be updated to include bourbon in that. Can we, you know, can we get, can we get a little bit of love for that in the chat, maybe? Uh, Joseph Brazo had to come back to the office, so I can't stay. Wanted to say hello and see you soon. We'll see you in soon, soon indeed, Joseph. Words are working real great tonight for me. I don't know. Uh, tea is perfect when you're on the other side of the world, and it's morning. Absolutely. Donnie says, smash that like. Yes, please, smash that like button. It would be awesome. It was a sad attempt of an April Fool's joke. Okay. All right. Well, I missed that. So what I'm going to do... And this is not in any way scientifically proven, but it is suggested by some people on the internet, as well as things that I kind of like to do with pairings as well. Also, I'm a little sweaty. I apologize. I'm trying to get the sweat out of my face. Um, so to, to start things out, I wanted to go with a pairing that thought bourbon was in apple pie already. Uh, it can be. It's in uh, banana, uh, not banana pie, bread pudding. Bread pudding. If you have never had bread pudding... Come to Kentucky, go to Keeneland, and get you some bread pudding, because it is mwah, just absolutely fantastic. Such good stuff. Uh, but I'm sure you could put it in apple pie as well. So I'm pulling from my very dusty decanter here for this first pour. And the original pairing that I saw was Maker's Mark and a an IPA. So... I like Maker's Mark, but I have other products, of course, that I like better, especially in the weeded bourbon category. And in my decanter, I took this kind of idea from Clifton over at Bourbon Bites. Has Clifton shown up yet? If he has, I have not noticed. I apologize. Clifton, if you're here, hello. Um, but this is kind of my decanted house bourbon, and it is Rebel 100. So I like to keep this on hand whenever I can. Um, also, I have never talked about this before. I figure while we're talking about the canters, I may as well. This is a little, it's not so much a decanter as much as it is a carafe, carafe? I don't know how to say it. Um, from the Rare Bird 101 meetup here in Lexington, and everybody who attended signed it, and I got to keep it, which is really cool. And I smudged somebody's um, <laughs> signature. Did I not sign this? I don't think I did. Well, that's a shame. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Lil, even though it's my day off, 10 a.m. bourbons mean I'm smashed by midday. We save those shenanigans for when we're in Kentucky. There we go. So, anyway. Rebel 100. Weeded bourbon. 100 proof. And I also went with this slightly leftover, but still going to be good nonetheless. Braxton Brewing. Hoppy Holiday extra IPA. So I'm going like all the way in on the hops, which I'm not upset about because I like a hoppy beer. I like IPAs. They're good. It's just, you know, 
how it goes. So I had to do my, I always do this. I don't know if people, other people do this, but I'm always afraid that when I have time to sign, that just got me, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you for that. I can sign this bad boy whenever I want to. But I'm always afraid that when I open a canned soda, anything that's carbonated, it's just going to blow up in my face. So I do, and I truly don't know if anybody else does this, but I always give it at least three taps. I think that was four, but on the top, so that uh, it kind of subdues some of the carbonation. And then it doesn't explode as much. And then it, even if I still feel like I'm going to maybe pop it and it's going to explode on me, I kind of really, really gently open it, let some of that subside, and then kind of go from there. So I'm also going to pour um, about half, <clears throat> excuse me, about half of this beer because I do have, gosh, something really caught me in my throat. I'm so sorry. I do have two other beers that I want to touch on, so we're gonna we're gonna take it a little bit slower. <laughs> One of them's a stout, so I don't want to go all in so early. So anyway, Sugar Kitty, you are new here, by the way, and I am really loving your addition to the chat. It just it it brings it brings some joy to me. You'll send me some beer from your hometown, Hop Capital of the World. I'm not mad about it. As much as I love when people send me bourbon, I love when people send me beer, too. It's so cool. It's so much fun. I got to, um, well, I, the, the beginning of my 2020 uh, journey, I'm so sorry, <laughs> with Goose Island, actually came from Goose Island themselves. They sent me some beers to try, and we had recorded an episode with their head brewer, I believe is who it was. And the audio files just turned out to be dog crap. I mean, just so, so bad. And I um, I felt I felt really terrible about it. We haven't been able to re-record that yet and kind of recapture the magic. But we will do that soon. Ryan Tarpy, hello. Good to see you, buddy. Welcome into the chat. Good to have you here. Uh, Sugar Kitty said, it's been, I've been here once or twice, but it's been a while. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. All that matters is that you're here now. So let's go into this little pairing. So Rebel 100 and some weeded bourbons in general are just well known for their nutty quality. And hoppy beers are just citrusy uh, for, the, for the most part. People don't really care much for it. I saw somebody say that all IPAs taste like you drank uh, motor oil. And I get it. It's not for everybody. But here's the thing, man. I can't, I'm like ride or die IPAs. Does that make me a um, boring white dude? Probably, but who cares? Terrence Scott, hello. John T, hello John T. Guys, it is so good to have you people in the chat. I say you people, um, I don't mean it derogatorily, but I am curious. Oh, we gotta have more than that in the chat right now. Yeah, there we go. We got a few viewers. Yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. And, uh, oh, yeah, also, it's the first day of, the, of baseball. Um, I think I talked about that a little bit. Cardinals did really well. Um, they played super great. I don't, I can't remember if they beat the Reds or not, but they were up 11-7 to f 7 the last time I checked. So, if anybody can, uh, if anybody wants to go check the scores, <laughs> you don't have to do that. That's a dumb thing to do. Terrence Scott loves a good New England IPA. New England IPAs are what got me into loving IPAs in general. The, the hazy, juicy beers are <clears throat> are my favorite i don't know why i can't talk tonight without getting a little bit stuff stuffed up <sighs> sugar kitty are you over in the uh are you in that area are you another aussie do we have another aussie in the chat or New Zealander. By the way, don't um don't judge me for my bad accents. I apologize in advance. Lemon to six. Thank you, Pat. Oh, Rebel One Hundred, so good, man. Swan, could you shush, please? I'm trying to do a live stream. Thank you. Dang fans.
Okay, well, we have a guest, and it's my ceiling fan. Um, also, I should have mentioned this up top. The tip system is also known as Snuffy Chats in celebration of our mascot and the man himself, Mr. Snuffleupagus. And so Snuffy's going to be hanging out with us, as always, on the stream. So Ryan's drinking a little Old Granddad 114. Very nice. Oh, you used to live in Fiji. That is cool. I am my I am my own Snuffleupagus. Yeah, we are uh, we're very similarly colored and dressed. Wow, we are very similar tonight. Oh boy. I should have changed my shirt. Okay. Well. I kind of lost the bit there because he didn't nod his head the way that I had intended for him to. <laughs> All right, let's check out this pairing, why don't we? Rebel 100 has so much more flavor than most of its weeded competition products. Truly. I know how people go crazy over Special Reserve and they go crazy over Weller 12 and the 107s and, and everything, but in this bracket, I think it's a Weller killer. I really, truly do. I'm going to turn this fan off here for just real quick because it's driving me crazy. A peri pairing? <laughs> Shut up, fan. I shouldn't get too mad. He is my biggest fan. Ah! <laughs> oh, I'm peeking a little bit. The Bourbon Wrench, Trev Wilson. Hello, Trev. Thank you so much for being here. Everybody give a big round of applause. Give him some of these. What is this? What is this personality that I've adopted for live streams? I don't know. Jason Coates. Hello, Jason. Woo, baseball. Oh, that was woo, baseball. I thought it was like, woo, baseball. Royals, Rangers, been wild. Um, but you were actually saying, woo, baseball. Yes, please smash that like button. I appreciate it. Vodka dude. <laughs> Perry's practically perfect pairing performance party. That is a mouthful. I cannot say that three times fast either. This pairing is awesome, man. Th this this is great. I love this. I highly recommend this to uh, to people who are looking for something new to try. So again, this is the Jubilee Hoppy Holiday Extra IPA. Oh, you can't see that very well, can you? From Braxton Brewing Labs up in Northern Kentucky, um, I believe they're in Newport, maybe Covington, I can't remember for sure, but they're awesome, I got to play a couple gigs there before, I freaking loved it, dude, it was so much fun, I went with a, with a band um, that I played with for a while, and oh, I was like, what are the Maker's Mark cards doing out, that's for next week's video, stay tuned for that, guys, um, really funny bit that I did at the, up, up the top, um, good to see all you beauties, it's good to see you too, you beautiful man. Handsome, gorgeous man. Bourbon uh, noob, Pat. Seeing the beer slash bourbon combo had me cra has me craving. Jameson dropped into some Guinness. Coincidentally, last time I had one of those, I was at a baseball game. Very nice. I have not been to a baseball game. What year did I get married? 2016? Yeah, 2016. Um, and... Uh, that was a Reds game. That was awesome. All right. First snuffy chat from Mr. Don Nishida. Ten bucks. Um, maybe this is going to come up on the tips. I don't know. I truly don't know. But anyway, cheers to you, Don. Appreciate you, buddy. Michael, uh, Perry, what's been your biggest surprise and disappointed bourbon you've had? Ooh. Biggest surprise. I will say I really didn't have... I, and I think I'm probably saying this because it's just on my brain, but I didn't have a whole lot of expectations going into uh, Rebel 100. I really didn't. Um, what's come out over the past year or so? There have been some killer bullet single barrels that have been out. Uh, oh, you know what? 
the bullet blender select that came out last year absolutely blew me away i was not ready for that to be as good as it was and it, it just absolutely killed it was awesome so i uh i digged it dug it i dug it a lot <laughs> but disappointing wise i mean i didn't have high hopes for this one but i still was like i want this to be good and that was the uh, Dickel Bottled and Bond 13 year. Um, I think that's one of my most significant uh, disappointments over the past few years. It was just, it's just awful, man. It's just no good. Uh, and I know everybody keeps saying that the 11 year old Dickel Bottled and Bond is better. I just haven't gotten to try it yet. I haven't picked up a bottle. It's not really been around, but you know. Uh, yes, Donnie, thank you for sharing that. Tips are accepted at the uh, Stream Elements link down below. Robot Scott slept in here as well. Hello, Robot Scott. Good to see you. It slapped. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Hear my phone going off again. Does that mean? I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting notifications. My phone goes off a lot. I don't know if I've ever brought that up before, but it is constantly going off. Uh, what were we talking about? I don't know. can't remember. It's a great pairing. So traditionally, this is called like a sidecar or a... Uh, I almost wanted to say Blitzkrieg. That is not right. Um... But people call them bombs, too. But my, my father-in-law, Brett, who's been on the show before, um, lovingly calls them a bat and a ball. And so I've always just kind of associated that with them as well. Not always, but um, but I, I, like, I like bourbon and beer pairings a lot. I really, really enjoy um, sitting down with, with two and just kind of allow, allowing them to play off of each other. And I think once you find that that perfect pairing, it's hard to really go any other way. And nutty bourbons seem to be what a lot of people will go towards when it comes to when it comes to beer pairings, because you know you're, you're usually getting something a little bit lighter, a little bit fruitier with the beer, and so they're trying to find something to kind of round that out. And in this case. It's worked exceptionally well. By the way, I watched somebody on a live stream once drink a beer from a glass like this, and they had like fish lips when they were drinking from it, and it was also amplified by the bottom of the glass. So I actively try not to look like that when I'm drinking beer, especially on camera. So if that's, uh, if that's something that that you notice, please keep it to yourselves. Or or talk about it. I don't know. I mean we can we can get real. I'll pull the chair up, turn it backwards, and say, hey kids, let's let's wrap. I could do that. Or I could just not. And move right the heck along. My phone keeps going off. <laughs> Part of me's like, what's going on over there? Hold on. All right, we good. We good. Never mind. Didn't know what was going on. Bourbon noob, what were you laughing at? I don't know what you're laughing at, Pat, but it's fine. Anyway. Shot in the chaser? I guess you could call that, too. Oh, maybe you're laughing at my teeth thing. One of my favorite quotes, it's from a, um, it's from a Gus Johnson video. I don't know if you guys know who Gus Johnson is. Really cool dude. Really funny. Love his work on YouTube. And his podcast is hilarious, too. But he has this sketch called Pillow Guy. And he's basically just got 
Oh, fish lip story. See, yeah, there we go. There we go. But he's basically just got pillows, like, taped up all around him. And he, <laughs> he pulls out a Bud Light and tries to drink it. Excuse me. And he's just, like, putting his mouth over top of the pillows. And the guy who's filming it says, I have never seen more of somebody's lips drink a beer in my life. And I find that so unbelievably funny for some reason. It just kills me every time I watch it. I find it so freaking hilarious. Anyway. Yeah, I'm glad I got to share the uh, the fish lip story with you guys. So now you can notice it every time that I <laughs> might do it. Oop. Almost knocked over one of my other beers. I can't see the screen super well with the mic where it was. So hopefully the audio remains okay. Hopefully it stays pretty yeah that's not bad that's not bad kind of do a little bit more angling but ideally the camera would be off or the uh, microphone would be off camera but here we are i just have i only have so much space in my garage where i am currently all right let's try to knock the rest of this pairing out so that we can move on to the next thing because i'm really excited about the next one The real question is, how much of this beer can I chug before I give up? The answer was the rest of it, so... <laughs> oh my goodness. Woo! Man, that immediately got me. Okay. So, I wanted to kind of lighten things up in the middle a little bit as far as beer goes um not so much with the bourbon we'll get to that in just a second so this is one of my go-to beers this is one that if i'm just kind of looking for something here snuffy we're gonna move over just a bit bud no we don't want you staring into people's souls uh, i think you're gonna burn up if i do that yeah, we'll just stick you where you were. <laughs> All of it if I'm determined. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, this is, as I was saying, one of my go-to beers, one of my favorites. This is Narragansett. And I, I treat this almost like a utility beer, kind of in the same way that I do Turkey 101 in many ways. Like, it's, it's inexpensive, for one. And... Two, I mean, it comes in the tall boy. Oh boy, okay. It's getting to me. I can feel all the gas in my belly. <laughs> but it it just pairs really well uh, with a lot of higher proof and some more, um, I would say, complex bourbons. It's not an overly complex beer either, which I don't mind. I don't really have a problem with that, honestly. What I like about it is that it's it's a lot of beer. It's inexpensive. I think it's like eight bucks for a six pack of these tall boys. And I mean, it's it's good. Like if it were anything less than that, I'd be like, ah, hey, screw it. What am I doing with my life? All right. So tap, as I mentioned before. Hey. We'll pour. And again, I'm only doing about half of that uh, glass because that's a lot of beer. Is it a Pilsner? I think technically yes. No, it's a lager. I apologize. So it's right there on the front. In big bold letters, lager. <laughs> So, there you go. Snuffy, that's for you, buddy. You can have some of that. Oh, you can thank me later. That sounded strange. Probably not like a comment I should have made. Anyway, so I wanted to pair this with something a little bit higher proof. As you can tell, I'm kind of moving up in proof. Uh, not necessarily moving up in um, ABV on the beers. Um, because, I mean, I am in some ways. This was 8%. And I think... This is like 
Why doesn't it say the ABV? Is it non-alcoholic? Is that... Is it placebo? It's my favorite Pokemon, by the way, placebo. Ah, oh, hello, Emily. Good to see you. Uh, so I am moving up a little bit in proof, as I was saying, but rare breed. Thank God the cork didn't die. Also, Zopher 1920. What up, Zopher? Good to see you in here, buddy. A little bit of that. A little bit of this. There we go. I also like that I can display stuff for you guys in this setup, too. I should do... <laughs> um, Nick? Also, thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. I don't think I should do a, uh, a KBS and Stag Jr. pairing. Um, even if you do call it the blackout, because... I think that's pretty much explanatory as to why I shouldn't. I mean, that's um, it's a lot, man, and I don't feel I don't feel good about doing that. But um, you know, oh well. Anyway, this setup's cool. I'm digging this, man. I'm just having i having a time of my life up here, guys. Just enjoying it so much. Uh, we will. The next pairing, I will say though, is similar to that not quite the same but it's similar so we'll see you know one of the things that i i have kind of lost <laughs> and i'm realizing this now but i also always had something in between me and the audience is uh my stage presence i don't have the stage presence that i used to have like when i was playing music or the well we did one live show for the podcast once but as I kind of stopped playing music um, and <clears throat> throughout the pandemic, because I've kind of become a little bit more introverted as well. Um, it's amazing while it lasts. How many things about that can we say in life, eh? Anyway, I, I kind of forget to be more present, presentable. I don't know. There's a thing that I kind of like... I skip out on a little bit. I think it's just, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just losing my mind. I don't know. Anyway, a little bit of Rare Breed, a little bit of Narragansett. Narragansett's also a New York beer. Um, I believe that it actually gained a little bit of notoriety by showing up in Jurassic Park. So somebody, uh, <laughs> somebody fact checked me, Ch fact check me on that, please, in the comments. But I am pretty sure that uh, Gansett did show up in Jurassic Park. Um, could be wrong. Could be horribly, horribly wrong. Who's to say? All right. Cheers. Mm. Rear breed. Beautiful so-and-so. What's great about this, by the way, this is an excellent pairing, um, and I'm really happy that I kind of pulled this one out, but what's great about this is that where, where the bourbon in the last pairing, the rare, excuse me, the Rebel Yell, helped to kind of round out the beer, the beer in this case helps to round out the rare breed. So... The Rare Breed introduces these, like, high-octane flavors. Um, the higher proof definitely is going to introduce more than uh, you're kind of kind of expecting. But the the beer itself kind of mellows everything out, and not in a bad way. I think when people say, oh, it just it mellows it out and it's not as good, it's not the point. It's not that it's not as good. It helps to kind of round it out and make it a more enjoyable experience. Do I love Rare Breed on its own? Absolutely. freaking lutely But... It's cool to do something different with it. Uh, Jason from the Mash and Drum. What's up, man? Beer and bourbon. Noise. Noise indeed. Everybody say hello to Jason. Jason needs no introduction. He's the man, the myth, the legend himself. Thank you so much for stopping by, Jason. But yeah, 
Gansett, and Rare Breed at the moment. And uh, a lot of beer quickly goes kind of kind of right to my head. So, hello, Bobby, Bourbon Battalion. Cheers. Sorry I'm late. It's all good, man. You here? It's all that matters. Speaking of Bourbon Battalion, I'm going to be on his live stream tomorrow night over on his YouTube channel. So we're going to be drinking some Heaven Hill products, and I'm excited about it. Oh, cheers. <laughs> good to see Bobby in here. Good indeed. All right, just making sure I'm not missing anything. Also, uh, speaking of upcoming Pear Bear appearances, at some point in the near future, and I'm really excited about it, but also horribly, horribly nervous, I will be a part of the uh, the taste off, I guess is what you would call it, um, with... Over over on uh, ADHD Whiskey's channel, uh, and it, it it's gonna be this really cool bracket scenario, um, paired up for just a really really fun time. Um, I have to go up against Sarah from It's Bourbon Night in the first round, so yeah, not sure how that's gonna go for me. Sarah has one of the best palettes out there, so we will certainly see, my friends. Perhaps I shall fall on my own petard. Or maybe I will successfully grab said petard. And it is the bubbles. It is the bubbles. <laughs> Hammer pants? Absolutely. We should do a stream where we all just wear hammer pants. <laughs> More room and pad in for when you have ECBP and can't get up. Still a great Jason moment. That's like an OG Jason moment. Man, I love it. I love it. Ah. Woo! Woohoo! Mm, okay. Man, I feel like I gotta rest at the bar for a little bit. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I gotta recollect myself a little bit. I was not anticipating it wrongfully so, too. The effect this would have on my belly. Um, just because of how much it is all at once. Do I have my initials written on this? No, I have something else written. Who's to say? Jason's moments do never get old. That is for sure, Sugar Kitty. Absolutely. Good evening, Wheels. What's up, Brandon? Good to see you in here, my friend. I'm always happy to see Br Brandon. You're like one of those guys where, like, every time I see you, you it like brings me joy that you're here in the chat. I don't know why, but I'm just always like, hey. Freaking wheels turned up, y'all. Like, now it's a party. I don't know. I don't know why I feel that way. But I always, always do. And I'm always happy to see it. And, like, you you don't always make it to the stream, which is fine. I'm not, I can't say, you know, everybody has to be at every single stream. But, <laughs> like, it's a nice surprise if you show up, man. So, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Now, the real question is, am I... Nope, I'm not. Nope, can't even say it. I was going to say, am I crazy enough to just... Oh, Boilermaker! That's the word I was looking for. Um, throw the rest of the bourbon into the beer and finish it off that way. Truthfully, I'm not feeling that right now. Um, I think it would probably... Probably not end well for me. I don't know. Glad to be here, Perry. Glad you are here, Wheels. I'm really sorry for the burping. I'm really, I feel really gross and bad about it. It just, ugh. <laughs> it's all sitting, like, right here. Like, it's not settling. It's just this pocket of air. <laughs> 
and it just won't let me get comfortable. I don't know. Is this what being pregnant feels like? It's not. It's, it's not at all. Andrew West says, do we eat? Ugh. All right, fine. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Uh, Andrew West is still working, though, which is totally fine. You do you, man. I don't know where you are, Andrew, by the way. You're out west, aren't you? I can't remember for sure. Andrew, I'm going to miss you at uh, Whiskey Weekend this year. I'm not going. I don't know if, if you're going. But uh, it's a missed opportunity to reconnect with folks. Papa Ritter's in the house! I hate that I said that. Um, <laughs> beer bubbles for sure. Uh, let's go Mets. Look, man. I got to give it to you. Mets are looking pretty great this year. So, I uh, love you too, Andrew. It's good seeing you in here, buddy. Just warm warm my heart. But Oh, BC, that's right. Oh, that tastes weird now. That was not a great idea. Um, you're not going either. Yeah. Uh, it's it's fair. It's fair. It's a weird year for it, and I like I just can't straight up afford it, especially with a baby. And I I just it didn't it didn't make sense for me to be a part of that this year. But uh maybe next year. Maybe we can make that happen next year. <laughs> Lil, I love that you call Dad Mr. Ritter. I find that just fascinating. It makes me happy. We want a road trip before or after Whiskey Weekend Batch 4. Hopefully allow for more visiting. That would be awesome! By the way, if you come to Kentucky or you come to Lexington, hit me up. <laughs> I love hanging out with people who are doing road trips or just passing through my area. It's always fun. It's a good, it's a good time. I love meeting people. And drinking with them. That's especially cool. When somebody's like, hey, I, I want to meet up with you, and also I really want you to try this bourbon. I'm like, Pfft. time and place, dude. <laughs> Hard to say no. Hard to say no to a, a proposition like that. All right, I'm going to get this out of the way so I can move on to my last pairing. Um, because if I don't, I'm going to get sleepy. Dad's actually very flattered by the Mr. Ritter comment. As you should be. Honestly, I'm a little sad you didn't get an invite as a podcaster. Yeah. I mean... It... <laughs> I don't know what else to say, Andrew. So <laughs> maybe I'll talk to you later. But for sure, the summer at OBC. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Dad's gonna have a drink with us too, or he would have a drink with us too, for when they came to Kentucky. Joseph Brazo is gonna be here next week, by the way. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was such a bad idea. Throwing the rest of that bourbon in there. We don't have to go there right now, but... Dude, you're right on the money. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what else to say. But it's, um... It is a bummer. Um... I honestly don't know what else to say about it in in this situation. I uh, <laughs> We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later, but I was uh I was also bummed. I was also bummed. I'll leave it at that. So, as you can probably see, I pulled out a Bourbon County Stout for tonight for the last pairing. This is 2017's release. And I, I've actually had this sitting around for a couple of years. Oh boy. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's supposed to be like four years is as long as it's actually going to develop in the bottle. So this is going to be the one that if I actively finish a beer tonight, um, it's going to be this one. So, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. The beer bubbles, man. The beer bubbles. Snuffy, keep that cold for me, would you? So, of course, with a bourbon barrel stout, I figured, like I said, this could be a mistake, but I love this idea. Lige Craig Barrel Proof. This is the A120. So, ooh, good pop. America and whatnot, and so on, and so forth. You saw nothing. And if you did, I did it on purpose. Piggy. Who's the piggy thing? Oh, the noise I made. Ah, fair enough. I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed. I just... Ah, uh, goodness gracious. Tis to be expected? Tis indeed, Bobby. Tis indeed. So, this was, uh, I ate it. <laughs> like I always say to Jason C., stay vertical. I'm, look, man, I'm here. I'm happy. I'm enjoying things, life, so on and so forth. <laughs> I feel like... I might be missing some tips. And it's not either coming through to my email or it's not coming up. Hold on. Or it's not coming up on screen. Give me just a second. Let me make sure. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm still figuring out this whole new system, right? Ah, oh, whatever. I'll catch up later. Uh, mix it up. Mix it with a high malted barley, and we'll uh, bring out the coffee cocoa. That's a great idea. That's a really good idea, Bobby. I like that. I'll have to try that sometime. But I love my Goose Island stouts, buddy. I love them. I can't say no. And Lige Craig Barrel Proof. I, this is like your end of the night pairing, for sure. Um, not one that I would suggest often, because you could probably get in a little bit of trouble with it. But at the same time, if you're doing a live stream on YouTube, and your wife isn't home. <laughs> That's a bad excuse. I'm a dad. Like I shouldn't be even saying that. Ironically, golly, man. Jim Morris, hello, Jim Morris. He says, I don't know about pairing bourbon and beer, but you got an instant like for me for having Narragansett on the table when I dropped in a few minutes ago. Jim, thank you. Narragansett's one of my favorite beers. It is just, ah, it's perfect for just any time of year. It's great for sitting out on your deck or your porch or whatever, maybe your roof. I don't know what kind of life you live. And, and just having a good, like, after work beer. Honestly... I like drinking it, like, <laughs> even for lunch some days. Like, if I'm just... Because it, it's not heavy. It's a nice, lighter lager. And, I, I mean, it's it's just good. But thank you so much, Jim. I appreciate you. I don't know if you've... Uh, um, I don't know if you're a subscriber here or not. But please subscribe if you're uh, considering it. Um, but, yeah. Very cool. Thank you. That made my night. That's awesome. <laughs> Cheers to dad nights. Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing about dad nights. Dad nights anymore are just me being, <laughs> even if I have like a couple extra drinks, it's like being responsible with it. I mean, like, I can't, <laughs> I can't be crazy. I mean, I wasn't either anyway, but it doesn't matter. Dad's never tried Narragansett. 
I got one left in the fridge. I'll bring it over for Easter or something. <laughs> Boy, this is a great nose on the A120. Oh, subscribed a while back. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that, man. Very cool. Very cool to have you here. By the way, I have this... Um... Oh, this is... I. Uh... Okay. I think this came from Joseph Brazo. But this is a really cool bottle opener from Undercrown. I think this came from Joseph. I can't remember. I'll have to shoot him a text or something later find out but yeah let's get into this last boring or pairing rather Woo, buddy before i uh <laughs> go crazy will hendo will henderson what is up with you man sounds good uh wait what no so good to see you here that's what i was trying to say but i'm having a good time man baseball season again drinking beer and bourbon on a thursday night so I got a day of work left. Feeling good. Feeling good about my life choices at the moment. <laughs> Look, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof in and of itself is always going to be a winner. But I am excited to try this pairing live here on air for you people. Some good stuff. <laughs> that is a great pairing. It does, I think Bobby was talking about this earlier. It does bring out some of that cocoa note. There's some of the cocoa flavors in there as well. Uh, go Braves. Lost the first one, but we still have six, 161. Dad's a Mets fan, Will. I don't know what to tell you, guy. <laughs> Yo, what up, Eric Smith? Good to see you in here, man. Eric Smith's my buddy. He's a local Lexington, Lexington boy as well. So words are getting better and better the longer this stream goes on, which I am uh, incredibly proud of my able, my ab ability to pronounce some Kate. It's apparently how the rest of that sentence was going, but yeah, it, it totally, yeah. So Bobby, it was you. Um, it does totally bring out the, uh, the cocoa notes that you were talking about. Uh, that's that's delicious, man. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Mets suck, guys. Mets are actually pretty good this year, man. I don't know. I don't know what you what you're talking about, but I, Mets are looking pretty good this year. They look great in preseason as well. So, yeah, and there. See, Dad says just straight up, not a Braves fan. So. What do you do? It looks like I'm looking at the chat from this angle. Like, yeah, that's where Dad said he's not a Braves fan. And right above that is where Will said... Oh, wait, no, that's way too high. I'm like a weatherman almost. <laughs> Ability. Ability to pronunciate. Pronunciate? That's, that's worse than what I said, I feel like. But who's the same? Owl? Oh, oh well. You were saying oh well. Fair enough. This is just a good pairing that I like. <laughs> like I don't, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. Um, but th this is excellent, man. The, where the, the beer itself is, of course, a, a, a bourbon-aged stout. Or a bourbon finished stout, I guess you would say. The bourbon itself really accentuates some of the bourbon flavors that might get lost along the way. And it, it just does it in such a, a well-conceived and and really well-rounded way. I, I don't I don't know if uh me speak pretty. Yeah. Me talk pretty one day. Is that say um that's a David Sedaris book, I think. Um, anyway, this is just good. I'm, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. It's a great way to end your night out. 
Um, yeah. This Russell's pick is working, lol. Have you had a, rare, a Warehouse E yet? You know, Will, I don't think I've had a Warehouse E before. Um, there's a few that, like, I feel like I just haven't had. And I think E is one of them. I think E is one of them. I need. I might need to get a bottle. I might need to get a bottle. The microphone's over there. <laughs> I guess that's more like I'm trying to hide the story from you guys. I'm trying to hide information. Be sneaky. But no, I, I don't think I've had Warehouse E just yet. <laughs> Zover, did I hit the nail on the head with the David Sedaris book? Let me talk pretty one day. Glad somebody could uh, validate me. Yeah. Will, I feel the same way, man. I'm just happy baseball is back at all. Like, I know we got, like, the, the truncated season last year, but it just wasn't the same, you know? I just love baseball, dude. I love it so much. I love it as much as I love bourbon and apple pie because those things are also American, y'all. Just got Warehouse B. Bobby, nice. Just got a total wine pick, and it's great. Maybe I got to be on the lookout for Warehouse E now. Man, Elijah Craig barrel proof. I got it. Hey. Zofer and I understand each other, apparently. Mmm. Okay, well, I'm getting what is effectively known as the leans um, here. <laughs> America indeed, Will Hindo. Um, not quite back for us Red Sox fans. Rained out tonight. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> that is a shame, Jim. Hey, um, I think that does it for tonight's live stream. Thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate you guys. As always, if you have not yet, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe, bell notification, all that. Like I said, the very first This My Bourbon Podcast YouTube page review is going to be coming out next week. I got that video all lined up for editing and whatnot. Really excited for it. You guys are going to enjoy the heck out of it. Like I said, it involves something related to this deck of playing cards, which may or may not have come from the Maker's Mark Distillery. Uh, the leans. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what, what's going on? Anyway, um, bourbonshop.threadless.com is where you can find all of our apparel and our merchandise, except for the, this and my bourbon drinking glass, Glen Cairns, which are found at whiskeyambitions.com. Thank you, Chad and Sarah. It's Bourbon Night, as always, for allowing us to host those over there. And then last but not least, patreon.com slash podcast for as little as a dollar a month. You can become a supporter of the show. Five bucks a month gets you bonus content, like the pregame chats and the last call. Those come out every week before and after, respectively, each main episode. That does it. <laughs> it's been so long since I've heard that. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah, that does it for this week. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Loving the new space. I'm still digging this. It's great. I'm having a really good time up here. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you to our mods as well. Thank you, Donnie and Trev Wilson, the, uh, the bourbon wrench himself. That does it. See you guys next week. But until then, I'm Perry, and this is 10-Bip Live. Later, y'all.